anything comes close. I don't know. episode we were being hauled out at TJ's Marina in Bellhaven. They found that one of our props had been bent and they ended up taking both props off and sending them off to be worked on. We started doing, uh, taking advantage of the fact that we were on the hard to do some kind of work that I needed to get done. Um, in this case, where I was changing some wires and rehabbing the little motor that opens the window up front. Okay, here's an update after one day in the yard. Um, they did a great job in uh, uh, power washing the bottom. Looks really good. There's a few shallow, uh, thin places for the bottom paint but uh, we're gonna be going into fresh water soon and this won't be a problem and there's no reason to paint it paint it now um, all that discoloration from the bootstrap right where the white meets the black from the scummy water in the intercoastal has all been removed with a special scum remover looks really good Laura and I replaced the horn cover. That round, double round thing covers where the horns come to the surface there. It had a black gasket behind the screen there that met the face of the horn and it was dripping black goo out of it. So we cleaned all that up and replaced it with a new one we had. And you can see the hull is really pretty here where they cleaned it. The marina we were at had a courtesy golf cart and also a courtesy car. And we used both of them. Um, we enjoyed coming to this little downtown area that they had. For such a small town, they had a lot of restaurants, in my opinion. They had probably six or seven restaurants. And um, we ended up having dinner with some with some other boaters and had some drinks with some boaters so we were able to uh, enjoy the the downtown area a lot and we ended up driving along this uh, road i don't remember if it was front road or water road i think it may have been front street yeah, it was front street. and um it is right on the pongo Pong pongo river, pongo river. Um, so these houses end up having this beautiful view. It's quite large. It looks almost like a sound, but I believe it's still the river, right? And um, so they have these older homes and then they have some newer homes also, as you can imagine. But some of their homes were from the, some, some of their homes were from the turn of the century. So there's some pretty, some pretty little houses here. There were some cute little shops in the downtown area. And we stopped into many of them and chatted with the ladies that were there. Purses, you've got great, oh. you've got great stuff here. This is very nice. Yeah, I've worked here. It started in a house in the residential. Oh, really? Um, my sister-in-law started. Okay. Since we sold our house before we left Houston, we are on the lookout for someplace new to live. And we really like the Carolinas so far. So we're at the Cozy Mermaid in Bellhaven, and I'm talking to Joe, the owner of this shop, and she's telling me all about how wonderful it is to live here in Bellhaven. 
Belhaven is such a cute little town. It's kind of cozy. Everybody's friendly, knows each other. We have a lot of events to bring people into the town. A ph phenomenal 4th of July oh, wow. event here. Okay. One of the largest in the eastern part. Uh -huh. And we just think it's a town that everybody just loves. We have a lot of boaters come in and they hang out. And we just, we love the stories the boaters tell us mm -hmm. about their adventures. And Fantastic. we sure hope y'all have a nice travel and come back to see us. Well, in the thank future. you so much. Yeah. We appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Bell Haven has a very good res uh, Mexican restaurant that we enjoyed, and we had dinner one night with with Cheryl and Chris from Nautic Ventures, and we had a very good time with them. And um, the Mexican food, like I said, was um, Houston approved. Salute. Salute. About 25 miles north is the town of Washington, North Carolina. They say that they are the first Washington and also they're called the Little Washington. We went there and toured their downtown area which was just, I thought, just adorable. They also had uh, docks, they had a, a marina that was right there in their downtown area as well. And Chris and Cheryl went with us, and we were able to do some sightseeing. Okay, cool. There he is. Got it? Yeah, so this is a piece of artwork here in Washington, and this little white, this little ball represents a droplet of water, and it enters that little cloud area, and then it comes down the mountains, this driftwood mountain, down through and then into the estuary. This little piece of artwork is at the estuarium and then it goes back down. It's pretty cool. This little sculpture made out of driftwood. It starts in the mountains. It's supposed to represent the mountains with the pine cones up there. And then as the water comes down, and then it's got a taxidermy osprey. It's a beautiful piece of artwork made out of driftwood. They had some actual critters there in the estuarium. There's a little corn snake. Uh, that was actually moving around. Usually when you see these snakes in an exhibit like that, they're just motionless. But he was climbing around. It was a nice little museum. I really liked it. And uh, they had a little, uh, little alligator in one of the tanks. And they had a tank with some minnows in it and they had a tank with some crabs. And they had a section of the museum there that was kind of like how do people make a living in the estuary in the past and they had like a thing to crap. So it's finally time to leave and we have to get all our stuff back on the boat. We had, um, over the course of the week, we had taken a lot of things to our apartment and we ended up low, raising them up to the boat by a rope because the ladder was, was so high. And then they came and lifted the boat off the, the blocks and put it back into the water. It's really nerve wracking seeing your home get lifted up and driven around the yard. And we are in the Pongo River headed north. We are back in the water. I am so happy. Um, we are headed towards the Pungo River, Alligator River Canal, and we're going to anchor out tonight. So we are very happy to be back on the water. We ended up having both props um, done, reconditioned, and um, they're back on, but we had to wait for wind. There was a lot of wind the last few days. And we are on the Pungo River right now. And it is choppy. <laughs> it's windier. It's The winds are higher than I thought they were going to be. I may, Chris may have known what they were going to be. Um, but they're supposed to die down this afternoon. So there's a bridge that we have to get opened um, here in about 
oh, 40, about 50 miles from here. And they do not open in high winds. So they've been closed for three days. So I called them this morning to make sure they were gonna open. They said this afternoon should be fine. And um, so we're headed out. We are so happy to be back on the water. We were there for a week. Um, we were able to be a little bit mobile. They had a they had a courtesy car and a courtesy golf cart, so we zoomed around. We met another a couple last night that have our exact same boat there in Belhaven, so we went over and chatted with them. Mike and Kathy. So it was really nice to meet y'all. And um, beautiful boat. If I do say so myself. <laughs> the guys at the marina told me this in this uh, Pungo River, Al uh, Alligator River Canal, make sure you stay in the exact middle because there's stumps everywhere. See, all along the bank. Um, and it's like six feet deep over there, so it's tough to come all the way to the surface. We were told that this section of the of the intercoastal waterway is the last part to get dredged out. And I guess they didn't bother clearing out all these stumps. supposed to have died down by now and they haven't so we have about three foot waves every once in a while four foot waves so it's between two and two and four um, the boats handling it really well we're not I don't know if you can tell I, you know you can't really tell on video how rough it is it's 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 rough but it's um, the boat is taking it well the new propellers have worked fabulously. We got the boat up to 26 miles an hour, 27, 27 miles an hour earlier, just to make sure that uh, the propellers were working great. And, um, and they were, they did, they did a fabulous job. We were, it was smooth as, smooth as could be. So we were, were very happy. We were a little worried having them take it off and put it back on but but everything worked out great um we have about two more hours of this is that uh, hour. hour okay an hour of this we have, eight miles to go. we have eight miles to go there's a bridge up here the alligator river bridge that will not open if there's high winds But we have listened to the radio today, and he, I called this morning, and then we've also been listening to the radio, and they are opening the bridge this afternoon. Uh, Chris and Cheryl on Nautic Venture that we um, did some things with in in uh, Belhaven, they just went through. We heard them on the radio, so. So we know that they're opening the bridge today for sure. Oh, right now. Chris says they're about a mile ahead of us. I don't know if you can see the white caps. The winds are going about, uh, the winds are about 19 miles an hour and they really were supposed to be down to about 10 miles an hour by now. Um, I was looking at the apps a minute ago and now that it's gonna get down to 10 miles an hour about eight o'clock tonight. So we were planning on anchoring out in a in a cove, but I, I know it's not very protected, but, um, but that might be what we're doing. 
I don't know that we have an option. There is a, a marina, a small little marina, and we were planning on getting fuel there. Um, and maybe we, you know, if we decide we might stay there too, we don't know. We haven't decided. We have never been in this rough of water. And Chris was saying if he knew that it was going to be this rough, we would not have come out. We would have stayed another day in Bell Haven. But we're, we're pretty glad that we did though. We're um, both weathering it pretty well. Um, neither one of us feels sick. And the boat's doing great. And so we learned that the boat could take, you know, how much the boat, um, how, how well the boat takes this and how well we take it. And that we can still be comfortable in, in these kinds of seas. So we learn something new every day. And it's always an adventure. <laughs> yeah. So I'm so glad that we are going into these waves and they're not on the beam. Because with a beam is, is um, which would be hitting us on the side because that which that's just miserable when you get when the waves hit you on the side of the boat on the beam and you just rock the whole time this we're going up and down but we're not rocking side to side so it's a little bit easier it's easier to take definitely We are finally back on anchor. We could not be happier. We're at the mouth of the Alligator River and tomorrow we'll be, we'll be crossing the Alamaral Sound, which is that way. And here we are at sunset. We were able to get through all, the, all that wind today and the um the the big the waves and um the wind has finally died down they kept saying it was gonna die down but the winds finally died down and we are um we're just having a good night so happy to be back on anchor so happy <laughs> to be underway and we're gonna be crossing this sound tomorrow and on to the Dismal Swamp. We have another session of question and answers and we thought we'd do it while we are in an apartment. <laughs> um, our boat is still in, in um, on the hard dry dock and we have an ap apartment here at TJ's Marina. They have a little apartment that we could rent. So we have some more questions that we're going to answer. You ready? Sure. Um, one of the questions was, are you expected to tip the dock hands? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> there have been a couple of instances where city dock workers are not allowed to take tips, but everybody else is. And uh, we tip them anywhere from 5 to $20, depending on what they've done yeah. for us. We had a, a, some young men that were did a lot for us at... Um, Jekyll Island, I think, and we ended up tipping them twenty dollars because they did over and above. They helped us get the stairs set up. They did the cords. They tied us off. I think they, they moved us. With the oh, they moved us down to another. Um, pulled us down a wall to a closer, and uh, they got us an extension cord so we didn't have to dig, dig ours out. So they they went above and beyond. Yeah. They were very helpful. But the minimum is five dollars. But I think we usually tip about ten dollars per. Uh, dock hand, I think that might be on the high side. Um, most people, I think, though, tip five to ten dollars. All right, next question is uh, Did you look at trawlers before you settled on the Sea Ray? Yes, um, we looked at, uh, we didn't ever went on a trawler. Uh, we found this boat was our number one just based on the, you know, looking at, um, you know, boat ads. And uh, 
trawlers seemed the trawlers we were looking at seemed a little a little more expensive than this boat as hard as that made you believe we got a good deal on this boat and they're a little more utilitarian in this boat um if you know laura wouldn't have fallen in love with the bedroom and bathrooms on this boat we probably would have looked at other boats but mm -hmm. she really she you know when you know you know yeah. that's basically it yeah. uh, this boat has an advantage in that it can go fast uh, which we've done a few times to beat weather which is a nice option and it does well going slow so it, you know it, we like it she likes it okay. and um uh, so that's that's good enough for us, but we have plenty of friends like uh, almost all all the people we travel with on the loop have trawlers mm -hmm. and uh, They are beautiful inside and uh, You know, they probably get better fuel economy right. than we do and they probably all have bigger water tanks and they all probably all have bigger gas tanks and uh, and for a lot of reasons they may be a better choice for the loop, but you know we like this one. We do. All right. Next question is, do you <clears throat> recommend getting AIS, having radar, or having both? Both. Um, one is not a substitute for the other. Um, we don't run our radar very often, uh, just when the weather is, you know, when it's foggy and storms when we can't see, just on a few occasions, or we're just playing with it to try to see what, what boats look like. You know when you have good visibility mm -hmm. so that when you have bad visibility you're not you know guessing right. uh, but with the ais it's on constantly even on it, it never turns off it's automatic it's always on right. i don't think it draws very much because we haven't had any battery battery issues but it's good because not only do people see us but they know our name so they can call us or which is good because they can we don't always have the radio on but at anchor but we probably ought to start doing that so people can call us when we get on the river system right. there'll be barges and then they would say hey miracle you're a little bit too far out in the channel you need to move over i'm coming new with the wide load so i that those kinds of things but we've had lots of barge guys call us in advance to ask us to go to one side of the channel or the other because he was going to be making a turn or you know it's nice for them to be able to know your name because they they really I think would rather call you farther away than they could see you. Um, yes, I agree. So um, yeah. so that's that's a nice option. It, the 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 IES system we got was about seven or eight hundred dollars, and it was easy to install. It's just a couple of wires. It wasn't a big thing, and we use it all the time. We can see what boats are coming and call them, and or they can call us. It, it's it's nice. It's a luxury, but it's nice. But radar. Um, this is the first boat we've ever had with radar, and uh, we've we've used it a few times. Today we would have used it. At, we can went out to lunch at noon, and it was fogged in. You couldn't hardly see across the parking lot at noon. Yeah. So, we if we were out, we would have to turn the radar on. So if you need it, you need it. It's but it, again, it's a luxury, but it's nice to have. I do know the people. There are people that um, have AIS receivers, mm -hmm. but they don't transmit. So they can see other people and they can call them. Um, and there's also apps that you can use to uh, monitor people that have AIS. So you're able to see them um, and call them by name on the radio. If you don't, if you don't want to um, invest in getting an AIS to transmit your name. Yes, but in, if you have an app, then you have to have Wi-Fi going. That's so true. it's uh, so you know it's, it's not, and you got to join and the app service and pay you know you can you can do the free app but it won't tell you very much yeah it gives you people's names yeah okay so um the last question that we have is again about the ladder so we mm -hmm. might and again yeah, everybody's working about that ladder. <laughs> we had a lot of questions about our ladder which i love <laughs> um it says how were the ladder brackets installed um they're they're just got four bolts that go in through the uh, sidewall of the boat. One of the boats is the bolts and nuts come in by right in the very corner of a cabinet in the bedroom. So you can see them and they did a really good job. They have a backing plate and everything. And the other side 
goes in behind the instrument, the not the instrument, the electronic panel where you have all the switches. So I don't, I, you would have to take that panel off to see it in there. But we only have it on one side of the boat. But you could get the brackets and put them on the other side. Then you could put the ladder on either side of the boat. But in that case, it would be difficult because the bolts would be right in the sidewall of the shower, which would you know, ruin the look of the shower. You'd have these, you know, bolts and nuts in there sticking out, which is why I guess they didn't put it over there. And the other side on the other side is over is in a compartment above the air, some air conditioner. So it would probably go in there, but you'd have to figure out some way to not make it be so ugly in the shower. And plus your, your shower's, you know, sealed. It's waterproof, basically. You wouldn't want to drill four holes in it. You know, but we, so we haven't, right. we've contemplated it, but we've never had to do it. Usually we just park, you know, bow in or stern in so that we always have the ladder towards the, the finger dock or the wall. But a few times we've had, we have a little three stool step ladder and we put that on the dock and just climb up the step ladder and step one of the boat. So that works too. Been float, but most of the floating docks we can figure configure the boat when we tie it up so that you can step off the transom onto the dock. But that's only the floating dock. A regular dock wouldn't, you know, no. you might be good right. and get off, but three hours later when the dock when the tide comes up now it would be a three foot step and you couldn't get up it. So you have to keep all that in mind when you're putting the ladder out. Okay. And that's the end of the questions. Okay. We'll try we'll see what's gonna happen next. Well, we had a really long week, but thank you for sticking with us and um, join us next week as we head into the di through the Dismal Swamp and we get to the Chesapeake Bay. We are really excited about the Chesapeake Bay. This is one of the, the things we've been very um, looking forward to. So please, if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe and leave us comments and we love hearing from y'all. And stay tuned because Chris has another view from the shower window. Okay, here's the view from the Alligator River from the shower window. And we have one sailboat over there parked. got really calm from the horrible high winds we had earlier today. Nice tranquil evening.